Good morning, conference. I want to thank Sages for this opportunity. Uh, the authors have nothing to disclose. Exploratory laparotomy, or EL, remains the most widely utilized operation in both blunt and penetrating abdominal trauma. EL can lead to instances when there is no injury found or an injury is found that does not need any further intervention. Such a situation is termed as a non-therapeutic laparotomy. Historically, the rates have been as high as 61% in literature um, during the era of mandatory exploration and all penetrating trauma. Current rates have been trending to be about 7 to 8%. Uh, recent most is 8.3% as quoted by Coco et al. earlier this year. DL, or diagnostic laparoscopy, is gaining momentum in trauma. There have been numerous studies that have demonstrated DL to be as reliable as EL when it comes to identifying injuries. DL has been shown to have an accuracy, sensitivity, and specificity that approaches 100% in stable trauma patients. However, the biggest issue associated with DL has been the issue of missed injuries. Adopting the mandatory exploration of all quadrants and multi-port DL, the missed injury rates have actually dwindled down to about 0.5% in the current uh, literature. Several studies have reported benefits of therapeutic laparoscopy in both blunt and penetrating trauma. However, these are mostly single institution studies with limited sample size, and therefore they are not generalizable. There are no national studies evaluating the potential benefits of DL when it compares to NL. Therefore, our objective of this study was to look at the utilization and outcomes of DL in comparison with NL using the National Trauma Data Bank. The comparison group was chosen on the premise that NL were laparotomies that could have been avoided had the patient undergone DL. We looked at the National Trauma Data Bank for the years 2010 to 2015. The ICD-9 procedure codes for abdominal surgical interventions were queried, including gastrointestinal, hepatic, splenic, urological, and vascular procedures. In stable trauma patients, the following exclusion criteria was applied. Any patient less than 18 was excluded. If a patient had codes other than a laparotomy or laparoscopy, they were excluded. Any patient with an abdominal AIS score of greater than zero, AIS score of greater than three in any other region of the body, or ISS score of greater than 16 were excluded. This was done to ensure that the injury was not accounted for um, the outcome, and it was just a procedure. And any patient with a miss missing outcome variable was also excluded. If a patient met an inclusion criteria and underwent laparotomy, they were assigned to the NL group. And if they underwent laparoscopy, they were assigned to the DL group. We performed descriptive analysis. The baseline characteristics and outcomes were uh, compared using chi-square and t-tests where appropriate. Multivariate analysis was performed to assess for independent variables and their associated outcomes. There were a little over 117,000 patients that underwent uh, abdominal surgeries during this time period, of which only 4.4% met the inclusion criteria, 3.2% underwent NL, and 1.2% underwent DL. This diagram shows how our patients were selected, and for the purpose of this study, 3,705 patients, or 3.2% of the patients underwent NL, and 1,416 patients, or 1.2% of the patients underwent DL, and it was this, these two groups that were uh, assessed for outcomes. A uh, busy uh, diagram, but just want to highlight that the mean age was, uh, was different, uh, slightly older patients in the NL group. Uh, rate of penetrating injury was slightly more in the DL group, and lower GCS was seen in the NL group, and these were statistically significant. Looking at the outcomes, um, NL group had a higher mortality, length of stay, and morbidity. On a just analysis, it had a higher odds ratio of uh, length of stay, morbidity, and mortality as well. We also looked at the trends of uh, DL performed in all non-therapeutic explorations, and the rate uh, increased uh, from about 21% in 2010 to about 26% in 2015, and this was statistically significant. So laparoscopy and trauma has not yet matured to definite guidelines. However, literature supports the use of DL as a method of screening stable trauma patients. DL is a safe, efficient, and effective method of diagnosing intra-abdominal injuries, as is seen in our study, with increasing number being, being performed. The recent collaboration between SAGES and AAST will be beneficial in the development of standardized protocols in DL. So in summary, this study showed that there were over 3,700 non-therapeutic laparotomies performed in the U.S. in the five-year period. And among patients that underwent a non-therapeutic exploration, about one-fifth were performed in 2010 to about 25% of the patients were performed with DL. So we still 
lack a lot of procedures, uh, lack a lot of patients that could have undergone um, DL. NL was associated with a longer length of stay, higher morbidity, and higher mortality. Data supports that increased use of laparoscopy and trauma may improve the overall outcomes by decreasing the rate of NL. Limitations, uh, this was uh, a retrospective review of a trauma database, uh, so our study is uh, limited by the reporting errors of the uh, database itself. Although we compared patients with similar injury profile and physiological factors, uh, subjective reasons could have come into uh, an account uh, when a procedure was chosen, and that could not be captured by the database. Also, long-term outcomes such as hernia, incisional hernia could not be assessed uh, uh, due to the database. So in conclusion, uh, DL should be part of the armamentarium of trauma surgeons. The favorable outcome profile of DL highlights the importance of utilizing DL as a modality in stable trauma patients. However, future studies should be directed at elucidating the role of DL as a standardized screening modality in trauma care. Thank you.